Hey everyone, John Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com. Welcome to the Daily Futures Market Outlook for tomorrow's trading. Tomorrow being the 28th of the month, uh, rounding out the end of the month of February. Uh, overall, pretty good day today. I certainly can't complain with the amount of movement that we saw today. Offered up a lot of opportunities. As long as you were patient to wait for the right ones, you probably had a pretty good day of trading. Uh, now, as always, before we jump into the charts, there is plenty to talk about. Uh, make sure to swing it over to slingshotfutures.com. Scroll down and click on the Join the Daily Outlook newsletter. From there, you'll be able to sign up for our newsletter list. You'll be notified every time that one of these videos comes out. Along with that, in the newsletter, we go over a bunch of stuff that we just don't have time to talk about in the video. Everything from stocks, options, crypto, if it's moving, It'll show up in there at some point, so make sure to sign up for that newsletter so you don't miss any of those. Of course, if you haven't done so already, make sure to click on the Live Trade Room subscription and trial info. From there, you can sign up for a free three-day trial in the Live Trade Room so you can hang out with us for a couple days in the room and see what it's all about. It's a really great way to kind of get your feet a little bit wet and see how we approach the markets every day, how we trade, and just our general approach to the markets as a whole, uh, whether they're moving or not. Today was a pretty good example of a lot of movement, but it all depends on what's going on. So it's a great way to kind of jump in, ask a couple questions, and just hang out with us for a few days. Now, jumping into the charts here, we've got a lot of movement. The euro is kind of an interesting one. Yesterday, we were talking about how the market was stuck between these two wedges, and it really needed to make up its mind. Is it going to break up higher, or is this going to end up being a flag and we break down lower? Well, we finally have our answer. The euro does end up breaking down lower and coming in towards the wider, kind of shallower uh, area of support, the rising wedge bottom. It's so shallow, it won't even let me draw it with my drawing tool. Uh, but we are finally testing that area and showing at least a little bit of rejection. We can see if we zoom in a little bit closer here, the most recent four hour bar did have a good amount of wick on it. And that's likely because a lot of sellers were taking profit there. Now, the overall sentiment that we're getting hasn't shifted bullish. We're seeing some profit taking from the sellers, sure, but we're not seeing buyers coming flooding back in and slamming the market higher either. So that leads us to believe that we probably have at least a little bit more downside left in the overnight session, at least sideways to down uh, is kind of what it looks like at the moment. We have some really big bear bars and really good follow through and the buyers are nowhere to be found yet other than maybe just a little bit of the wick profit taking. So we're probably gonna see a little bit more downside potential. And the next area of support is going to be the big outline box right here. That's the next big area that I'm looking for. I'm looking for the mark to wanna drop down to around 22.090. Uh, it could go as far as 2141, uh, 21 400s but you know the top of that zone is going to be a key area of interest at 22090 and we'll see if the buyers can really kind of show up and support it from there now because this does kind of look like a flag we can also mark this up with a trend line off of the top and then come down towards that flag bottom and we could be looking for a flag blow off of about a distance down to the lows of that channel right that rising support coming in here this is an a b equals cd move meaning that we have a to b equals C to D, right? So we have the A right here equals the C to D leg. And that's kind of the, what it looks like right now that they might be gearing up to set and, uh, and drop. Now, you know, all of that said, that D leg down here does line up really well with the channel low currently, but if they were to hit that, they would have to drop all the way down there within the next two candles. And that's very likely not going to happen. Anything can happen in the markets, but that one's probably out of bounds by a little bit. Uh, generally, you know, we're probably going to be a little bit late to the party. And that means that the ABCD measured leg is going to be way down here. And by the time the market gets over there, if it were to just keep falling right now, we're not going to be anywhere really that close to it. So it doesn't look like we're going to have to worry about that kind of level of support too much, but it's always good to draw it up and see if it lines up with anything. In this case, it doesn't really do us a whole lot of good. I think it's going to be better off waiting for an area of support inside of here. And given the overall bearish tone that we have so far, it makes a lot of sense that we probably see more selling pressure into the overnight session to try to drive the market a little bit further down to catch some of this support. Now over on gold, uh, man, gold is a is a little bit of a mess. Uh, we, we're a little bit choppy right now. The earlier area of major support held beautifully. I don't think we could have asked for a better hold there, uh, but now that time is done and gone and we are going uh, in a little bit of a different direction. We have a very shallow rising support coming through and a very steep uh, downward resistance. Now this could be uh, a, a little bit of a bear channel. It does fit pretty well down there. And that creates kind of another crossing point of interest. We have the rising wedge bottom and that lines 
lines up with the bottom of the channel down here and they do look pretty close together. It looks pretty solid. Uh, so chances are a lot of sellers are going to be looking at that area as an area of interest, not only because of the swing low, but we also have the crossing point inside of here. And just, a, you know, overall an A to B equals C to D leg is going to be a little bit beyond that. Everything kind of stacking up in the same place. So likely there's going to be quite a bit of profit taking on a dip down to that area. Uh, as it stands right now, that is going to be an area of interest for sure. Uh, they would have to drop down to a pretty quick in order for that to actually work out. Uh, but it is something that we definitely want to keep our eyes on in that crossing point. It, it would have to happen in the next, you know, maybe four to eight hours. Each one of these candles are four hours a piece. And, well, they don't have a whole lot of room until we're past that little zone there. So they would need to get down there relatively soon. But all things considered, we do have a lower high. That is a big miss on the top. And with such a strong bear leg down, chances are the sellers are going to continue to drive this market down looking for some of these previous swing lows, especially since they're so clustered up on one another. Might even be looking for a little bit more than that. Overall, though, everything is looking nice and solid to the downside. I think we're probably going to see a little bit more bearishness in the overnight session. Looking at the candles in the shorter term, or at least zooming in a little bit, we have some very strong bear bars down, showing that the sellers will likely be able to go a little bit further at the very least in the overnight session, and that is what I am looking for. So, so continuing to sell going into tonight. Over on crude, uh, crude oil pulling back to the bottom of the wedge. Uh, now, not just the bottom of the wedge. It hasn't quite physically tested it. I mean, okay, you know. But that said, we do have rising wedge support coming into play and horizontal support. They're just a little bit early. So what I would really honestly like to see is the market to go sideways for a little bit here, stall for a little while, maybe, you know, four, eight hours, maybe even 12 hours, kind of pinging around and then catch a lift to the upside, showing that the buyers are showing some interest in that crossing point. Once again, we're getting a lot of these levels stacking up on each other. And this is another example of one of those hot spot zones uh, if it will let me actually drag this level over there, there we go, uh, where we have a crossing horizontal support and resistance. If we make this a little bit bigger, it'll probably be easier to see. There we go. And the rising bottom of the wedge, all of it lining up together. Now, again, like we were talking about yesterday, one thing that does stand out is the fact that we've missed the high, missed the high, missed the high. If this does end up being a situation where it doesn't hold so well uh, and start finding some buying pressure down here soon, we could be looking for a blow off underneath. It's very common. When they miss one side of the channel, they usually swing back down and overdo it on the other end. And sometimes you can even measure those distances by simply just taking a box, right? Take a box, go to the top of the channel, and that gives you a rough estimate of about how much you're expecting to see it overshoot down. And if it does blow down, expecting around 61.95 is definitely not unheard of given the measurement of the miss on the top. Overall, though, we are still looking like we have a, uh, a little bit of bearishness left in the tank, probably going to go sideways to slightly bearish. I would prefer to see a little bit more range bound so we can ping off at of the bottom of the, of the wedge and then catch some movement to the upside. So not anticipating a whole lot of movement in the overnight, uh, but a couple things that would be a caveat to that, of course, in, uh, let's see here, about uh, eight minutes or so, we have the API report coming out every Tuesday that comes out for crude oil, um, as long as there's no holiday, and that will definitely throw the market around a a little bit. So the big area that we're going to be keeping an eye on for the API is if we can get, uh, you know, a little bit of a dive lower, maybe that overshoot down to uh, 61, 69, or in that zone at least. And then from there, we might be able to use that API dip on news to fire the market right back up again. Uh, I think the market is still slightly edged towards the buy side, even though we are still in the in kind of the shadow of this giant fall to the down. Uh, buyers are still really putting up a good fight, and we might just be in store for a little bit of a dip first. And then over on the S&P, uh, the S&P cycling off at the top of the wedge. They did end up getting back to retesting a new high. And as soon as that new high was tested, man alive, that thing just put on cement shoes and went, went for a dip. <laughs> that thing just went flying lower. A uh, huge amount of bearish pressure to the downside, breaking below the wedge bottom support. Albeit that wedge low is not very good looking. If we're honest, uh, you know, a, a better looking wedge might even be slightly shallower like this. I uh, could even be looking for utilizing those same uh, slightly higher low going to the next one for a little bit of a bigger move down. Either way, they are obviously paying attention to the top of the wedge and we are pulling back uh, and looking for the next wedge bottom. They only overshot by just a little bit, not enough to really have any concern on the bottom edge. Uh, but we do have that other level of support at 2703 half. This was the earlier level of resistance and support all through here. And if we can get these lining up together, you know, get a big wick or something like that down into that area of support. Not only would we have the wedge and the horizontal support, uh, but we would also have roughly measuring from the bottom to the top, it looks like about a 38.2% retracement as well. So a couple things stacking up on one another all in around about the same area. 
Right now, we have a lot of bearishness coming off the highs. After they tested the top, it completely fell apart. And even though this is obviously bullish right now, we're above the moving averages. We have ascending triangles. Um, everything is pointing to the upside generally. Uh, right now, it looks like we're in a little bit of a profit-taking phase and probably going to see some more bearishness sideways to bear in the overnight session to try to get down to the wedge bottom. And that's kind of what I'm looking for going into tonight. Now, in terms of, uh, you know, the overall what's going on for tomorrow, we don't have a ton, really. Um, but, you know, there are a few things that we definitely want to keep our eyes on. Now, the first one is going to be taking a look at the news for tomorrow. And uh, we've got a pretty full calendar throughout the day, right? It's not all at one time like we had today. Uh, it's, it's spread out pretty evenly. So tomorrow at 4 o'clock out of Germany, we have the unemployment change for February forecasted at negative 15,000. At 5 o'clock out of the Eurozone, we have the CPI for February forecasted at 1.2%. At 8.30 out of the U.S., we have the GDP for quarter four, forecasted at 2.5%. At 10 o'clock, the pending home sales for the U.S., forecasted at 0.3%. The previous was 0.5%. Then we have the crude oil inventories for tomorrow, forecasted at a build of 2.077 million. That is a positive 2.077 million. Now, in a little bit here, we'll see the API numbers come out, and uh, that will give us a little bit of a better clue in terms of what to expect. But for right now, we're forecasting likely some bearish numbers coming out for tomorrow's inventories, on top of the way that the chart looks right now, begging the uh, maybe a little bit more downside. We'll have to wait and see. But that's going to do it for the outlook for tomorrow. As always, doesn't matter what market you're approaching or trading or whatever your favorite market is, whether it's cockroaches or lumber or crude oil, make a plan, trade the plan, follow those rules, and you'll be A-OK. -okay. Until next time, we'll see you all then.